Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I want to give you guys a quick motivation today why it is important that we are saved by grace through faith and that the gospel is exactly the way God designed it. There's a reason behind that too, okay? I'm going to explain in a, in a moment and also kind of deal with some issues that people are throwing around there that just get on my last nerves. But uh, I'm sure a lot of you agree with what I'm saying here because, I mean, this is something in Scripture anyway, so I, I don't have to go too far with that. But before I begin, i got to give you guys the gospel, which is the foundation of my channel. It is found in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4, and that is that Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. We believe in this eternally self-existing God in the person of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And i got to let you guys know Jesus left heaven, was born of a virgin, lived a perfect life, never sinned, shed his precious blood on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of all our sins, past, present, and future. All God asks is that we believe in the gospel, which is what I just presented to you right now, by his son, the testimony concerning his son, and admit that you're a sinner in need of a savior, because you know why? God already assessed the earth, and the verdict was that we all fall short. And the glory of God, and we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned. That means everybody is guilty. Therefore, without salvation through Jesus Christ, you still have your sins. Even though Jesus paid for the sins of the whole world on the cross, until you receive the free gift of salvation, those sins are not forgiven. Okay? He paid for it and wants to forgive you, but you must receive it by faith. Okay? And to receive it is simply believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead, and that his finished redemptive work on the cross was sufficient to pay for all your sin debt, past, present, and future. He paid it all. All he asks is that you trust and believe by faith alone. Okay? Now, back to my topic I want to talk about real quick. Topics, I guess. First one. So you know how me and the kids was doing Bible study you know, two nights ago, and then last night, you know, the thought popped up again, and the Bible study again, so, but I figured I would just make a video, maybe this is just the Holy Spirit letting me know, hey, share this. So, first things first, we know God made a promise, okay, God made a covenant with himself to Abraham concerning the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ, right? So everyone who was born again is born of the promised seed, okay? The seed of Abraham. Now, with that being said, let me take you guys back. Abraham, before Jacob, which is his grandson, <clears throat> there was neither Jew nor Gentiles. It was just one group of people living, okay? So, Abraham is from the Ur of Chaldean. So, he's a Chaldean, not a Jew. Isaac is Chaldean, not a Jew. Isaac's wife, Rebecca, is from Syria, not a Jew, okay? However, when Isaac's wife, Rebecca, because Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebecca, okay? You know, she was barren. She couldn't give birth. <clears throat> so Rebecca consulted God, right? By the age of 60, that is when um, Esau and Jacob was born, okay? And God told Rebecca, because I guess the two babies were, I guess, fighting, you know, in the stomach or kicking each other, whatever, in the, in the tummy. And God revealed to her that she had two nations, two nations in her. Okay, that the older will serve the younger. Okay, and when Esau came out first, Jacob was holding the heels. No, wait a minute, I can't remember if it was the other way around, but anyway, uh, was holding the heel of the first one that came out. Okay, <clears throat> but the point I'm trying to make is when Jacob, all of them were still Chaldeans. Okay, so let's just get that straight. Jacob, Esau, they were all Chaldeans. Okay, 
it is God himself that gave them a new, well, gave Jacob a new name because Edom was the name that his father Isaac named Esau. <clears throat> and Esau, the father loved Esau. Okay? He was his favorite child. Why? Because Esau was a hunter. So he hunted and served venison to the father. The father loved the fact that he can hunt and bring food, you know. So, of course, that's his favorite. Isaac, I mean, I'm sorry, Jacob was a homebody. He was like the chill one. He stays home, you know. He wasn't a hunter like his brother, okay. His mom loved him. Now, look at this. When Jacob was older, because you guys can read the whole account, you know, in Genesis. But when Jacob was older, he wrestled with God. And uh, please don't tell me God the Father, because it is not God the Father. He wrestled with Jesus. That's another place you find Jesus Christ. Okay? Because God the Father never leaves his throne. Jesus is the one who represents God the Father for us here on earth. Always been that way. From the Old Testament, even in the New Testament. Okay? Jacob wrestled with God. Okay? And from there... Jesus, which is, again, God the Son, even though the name wasn't called Jesus at the time, okay, gave him the name Israel. He said, now your name will be called Israel. So God is one that gave him the name Israel. So everyone that is born, his descendants alone, anyone that is born after Jacob, means his children, from his children moving forward are the Jewish people. Okay? Remember this. They are the Jewish people. And God chose them. Why? God loved Jacob, Esau. He hated. People say, well, why would God hate Esau? Well, a couple of reasons you need to figure out. Well, you need to figure out. Just how Because one, God is all-knowing. And he foreknew who Esau is going to be already. He already seen it. Okay, Esau was wicked, okay, and he's going to try to kill his brother. Remind you of Cain and Abel? Okay, well, Esau is going to try to kill his brother, and he did try to kill his brother. But not only that, the Edomites, which is exactly where Esau, you know, um, Esau's lineage is, you know, Edomites, because his father named him Edom. That, that's how the Edomites came about, okay? They hated the Jewish, you know, <laughs> brother that they have, which is from Jacob, okay? They were enemies to them. They never was allies to the children of Israel, never. The whole time, the children of Israel was in bondage with Egypt. The Edomites never set foot to try to help them or help rescue them, never, for 400 plus years, okay? So what I'm trying to get at here is a little history backdrop, why the gospel is so important. Now, Given what you know, that it was all one man, one people, one group of people. It, it, there was neither Jew nor Greek. Back then, it was just people in the earth, one group of people living in the earth with different places, okay, that they come from, okay? Fast forward to the New Testament. Likewise, every born-again believer is born into what? The promised seed. What seed? Abraham. You're born in, you are, that's why we call children of the promise. You see what God did here? Because the children of the promise, everything, this is why the body of Christ is neither Jew nor Greek. <laughs> We're here, a peculiar, literally one group of people. Even though we come from different areas, one group of people, just as it were prior to him, you know, uh, giving the Jews the name Israel. Okay? Why is that important? Hebrew Israelites, this destroys your whole theology of Hebrew Israelite because, first of all, you talk about the slavery and other stuff, and none of y'all is from there. You hear people talk about Noah or his sons, the Sham, Japheth, this, this one is his country, this one, yes, well, that might be true, but none of, but this point, Noah wasn't a Jew, Sham wasn't a Jew, Japheth wasn't a Jew, your son wasn't a Jew, 
Okay, I mean, we could go all the way down to the book of, uh, uh, I, mean, I mean, to Adam and Eve. They were not Jews. None of them were. Okay, the word Israel didn't exist till Jacob. So everyone that's born from Jacob is a Jew. That's how the Jewish people came about. The children of Israel, descendants of Jacob, period. Anything prior to that, Jews never existed, okay? With that being said, see how in the beginning when God made us all to be one people, okay? They were neither Jew nor Greek. In the end, what did he do? Reconcile us back to the same. There's neither Jew nor Greek. Every born again believer is one body, one nation, one group of people. Okay? There is one Christ for everyone. Okay? So we can't say, well, well, the church replaced Israel. That makes no, absolutely no sense because it, it, it literally defeats the whole purpose of the promise made to Abraham. Okay? We are sons of the promise, children of the promise seed. Okay? We are sons of the promise, okay, which was made to Abraham. So because you are saved, you are children of Abraham. Because of you are saved. Because you believed in the gospel, okay? So you see how that kind of takes you back? So, again, everyone becomes one person, one group of people for God, again, okay? This is what God has done. So the whole idea of... Um, I. <laughs> I, I I talked to this guy and he was saying some crazy stuff, man. Guys, they, I thought Hebrew Israelites was that. No, there's other people that teaching something else that's just that's heretical, you know. And I mean, I believe it's out of ignorance because the guy was respected, very awesome dude. I mean, he believed in the gospel and all, but this teaching right here is completely out of whack. Okay, seriously, because it's not scriptural. They're always trying to take names and tell you know this name means this, so therefore it's that, and then that's it. Hey, back up, man. I'm not interested in all of that, okay? Because this has nothing to do with your identity in Christ. Nothing. So you know the black people, you know, really, you know, you know, if you really think about it, you know, you know, you know, sham, you know, sham is Africa. So, so if in Africa, then therefore, you know, you know, it must be. You know, the Africans there, you know, are really like the Jewish. No, 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 no. There is no such thing. I just told you there was no Jewish people. Noah wasn't a Jew. His children wasn't Jews either. Okay? The Jewish nation was not birthed until Rebekah and Isaac. And therefore, it wasn't even called a Jewish nation yet until Jesus changed the name of uh, uh, Jacob to Israel. Before that, no one is a Jew. Okay? No one was a Jew. No one was a Jew. And no one was a Gentile. It was just one group of people living from different places, different nationalities. That's all it was. Okay? Abraham they didn't know God until God called him. Okay? So, again, this is just to clarify to people why you need to believe in the gospel. God knows what he's doing. Remember, this is all God's own doing. Not me, not you. You can't force something that's not there. Okay? It is by God's grace that we are saved through our faith in his son, Jesus Christ. And that not of anything that we can do, not of ourselves, it is God's own gift, God's own gift, not by our own works or efforts, so we can boast before him. I was kind of paraphrasing Ephesians 2 with 9, but you get the point. It is so important that we grasp the need of salvation and why God is doing what he does. It is all his own doing. See that? Just like he, oh my goodness, God is so tight. God is so tight, y'all. Everything he does, he does perfectly. So there's no one can take anything, you know, and twist it. So when people twist it, 
it is already found in error. People can see right straight through that. So we are all children of Abraham, all who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ by promise, by promise. This is why there is neither Jew nor Greek, Jew nor Gentile. Just like during the time of Abraham, there is neither Jew nor, nor Greek, Jew nor Gentile. And if you don't believe that, read your Bible and tell me where Abraham is from because it's right there. <laughs> It's right there. And tell me when the nation of Israel actually began. It wasn't in the stomach that it would call Israel. Oh, no. It was God after God, after Jacob wrestled with God. That's when he changed his name. Okay? And we know his father named Esau, Edom. Not God, Edom. Okay? And we know that God loved Jacob and hated Esau because he already knew and foreknew what Esau will become. Okay? So anyway, with that being said, I'm going to leave you guys with this one. But peep this, y'all. Peep this, y'all. Let's go to my gallery real quick. Screenshot. Look at this. Look at this. This is why you need to read your Bibles, y'all. Mary is not... This is from Pope Francis. Mary is not only the bridge joining us to God. She is more. She is the road that God traveled to reach us and the road that we must travel in order to reach him. This got to be the dumbest thing I've ever seen, okay, coming from this man. I mean, he don't wrote some pretty horrible things, but this right here takes the cake, y'all. You know, that we have one mediator, Jesus Christ, between God and Jesus Christ, okay? One Lord of you. Mary cross. Mary didn't pay for your sins. Mary. They call her holy. I went through the whole shebang. Okay. Catechism. I want our Mary you got Jesus and then you got the saint you got Mary because pray to and Father let's not play around this Lord Jesus Christ don't Your Bibles. If you are Catholic in this, don't take words single day. Many is goats. Not preacher don't want to because they're and I'm warning you. Is the devil's right hand? This right here. To see this because there are so many people who other people. That much, guys. Can Jesus come? Time is of the essence, you know. Soon and very soon, time you can begin to within yourself. That is because once you have you in Him, and enjoy or and he he basically take us home okay but again there's many many eyes being made man and 
for this crazy man in this whole thing called ecumenical. Why I'm telling you, a lot of these mainstream churches. Oh yeah. I'm not trying to prolong this longer. And I trust Christ. Decision for to sit here confessing. It is by grace. Grace of God. Salvation and forgiveness of There's no leave it. None of that. Okay? It is absolute. Okay? Salvation. Anything other than receive it to us by his own grace and the gospel, and doing 